We have a whole effort that we work to try and address the uh, responsibilities I have as the senior commander here in Japan to ensure that our, those the different mix of people that comprise U.S. Army Japan, which is our soldiers, our, their family members, our DA civilians, their family members, our Japanese uh, employees that are so valuable to us. The other folks that live on our community are, you know, we have commissary folks and the, school, the schools that support our children. We want them to all feel that U.S. Army Japan is a trusted, valued, and committed partner. That when they have concerns, they can turn to us and we can help them uh, address them, get them fixed. So they live in a community that's uh, safe and supported, support, supports what they're trying to get out of this experience here in Japan. And in turn, it also helps uh, accomplish the mission that we have. So uh, that's a big priority of mine one of three that I have and that's the one of, one of those main effort or one of those priorities I have is how I've organized uh, my responsibilities here in US Army Japan. We're all, the other, the most important priority though, uh, the number one priority which is across the whole army and around the world is readiness and we're really focusing on that right now but through several initiatives. Uh, not long ago Japan was seen as uh, somewhat of a sanctuary we could uh, reside here, operate out of here, and not be affected by the others in the region. Things have changed, in particular North Korea's capabilities. Uh, when you draw, they start and draw the rings on the map of their ability to reach out and touch uh, folks with their capabilities, now encompass Japan clearly. <clears throat> That's driving us to change our readiness posture. We must be ready today to help Korea perhaps fight tonight. So uh, that's a big initiative too, and the most important priority is changing our mindset here, that it's no longer a sanctuary, that we have to do all we can, both individually and then collectively as units, to be ready today. The final uh, initiative is we're looking to the future. What do we need to change on how we're currently disposed right now across Japan? Uh, the agreements, the structure we have, the infrastructure, what do we need to do to change things so we have a better set in the future and in, in tomorrow? So I think most senior leaders have the same three areas they work on uh, or they try to address. Number one is the readiness. Number two is the future. Number three is taking care of those great people that make your, your organization successful. So that's what uh, my priorities are. Uh, we have it under what's called ready, set, go, and there's different words under that, but it's easy to remember. But i uh, leave how I kind of said in the middle. The most important aspect of it all is readiness, and that's job one. I think communication is incredibly important. I think it's often the biggest challenge. Uh, you get so busy uh, in these jobs, and before you know it, you find that you haven't talked to your own people uh, in a long time and the workforce and the families and the people you know, that enable us to operate uh, deserve to be communicated with on what's going on, what are the priorities. More importantly, it's important that we listen to their thoughts, their concerns, um, requests for clarification. I think in the end what it does, it builds trust that uh, Getting back to that one line of effort of uh, trusted, valued, and committed partner, it's two ways. Uh, I want them to feel that we're of value to them and we must feel too that they're committed to what we're trying to do. And this communication bridges that gap that can happen if we don't talk to each other. We did do Facebook Town Hall last night. I think it's great. There was some really there's some things right in, under our nose that uh, we hadn't thought of, especially on the garrison side, that uh, we should we need to take a hard look at and, and, and probably put several, several things into play that we're not doing now. Uh, and so we had about 20 or 30 questions in the course of uh, an hour there, and probably half of them were the ones that we really needed to probably have a plan of action to put in place. So I do uh, prioritize these uh, open forums. Um, what I've found that is if you don't talk to people, they'll get information. Uh, if you don't talk to them, 
somebody else will tell them what's going on and they're usually somebody that doesn't know what's going on. So they'll fill them up with ideas and before you know it you have everybody going about 10 different ways in an organization instead of generally in the right way and big organizations want everybody generally heading in the same direction and communications are the key to that. Listen, it's a uh, I don't know how to qualify it to say, you know, to, to emphasize it enough. It's incredibly important. We have five allies in the Pacific, the U.S. does. Japan, Korea, Thailand, the Philippines, and Australia are our five ally partners in the Pacific. The one, and it probably sounds biased because I'm sitting here in Japan, I think Japan is the most critical of those relationships. I'm not talking just U.S. Army Ground Self-Defense Force, I'm talking the uh, alliance more broadly between the governments of Japan and the U.S. The SECDEF, the previous SECDEF that just, you know, a couple months ago uh, stated that the alliance between the US, United States and Japan is the cornerstone for peace and security in the Pacific. And I think that's a great way to describe it. The fact that uh, the United States guarantees the security of Japan and in turn the government of Japan allows the U.S. to base forces here, provides that peace and security in a region that's incredibly dynamic and has these friction points throughout the area and to be able for the U.S. to be here where the problems are provides that peace, that stability in a region that potentially uh, has, you know, could head in a different direction. The importance of our role in today's Army is a great question, Sato. And I would say the farther away you get from Japan, the less understood it's, it, it is. Um, my, my direct boss, General Brown in Hawaii, highly values it. He's the U.S. Army Pacific Commander, and he's, I'm his subordinate in the Army chain here. And he empowers me to work theater-level Army issues down here in Japan on his stead, working with the Ground Staff Office and General Kabe. The challenge I have is when I get back into D.C. is explaining the importance of the role of the U.S. Army uh, forces here in Japan and U.S. Army Japan. Uh, and so myself and General Brown worked that with the Pentagon to explain that because resources are tied all the way back there. Uh, to me it's an easy argument to make. When I go back there I have everybody very interested in understanding what I do because they want to support it. They realize the importance of the relationship with Japan, the importance of Northeast Asia to our to the security of, of, of this part of the region, of, of the world, and our, how much of our economy comes through here. Uh, the North Korea is here, and everything. So, whenever I go there to explain what we do, they're all ears. They want to understand it so they can better support us. So, uh, but myself here, I'm, I, I've come over the last 18 months to really value what we bring to the Army as a whole here. We set the theater here in Japan for the rest of the Army to come in in crisis. And that's what U.S. Army Japan does on a day-to-day -day basis. And we support not just the Army, we support the joint team here. A lot of the U.S. Army here in Japan provides joint capability that supports USFJ and the other components here in Japan. So again, not well understood, but incredibly important to support the team. Listen, I'll say up front, I've been very proud of the how our U.S. soldiers, families, DA civilians, uh, how they've behaved here in Japan, how they've comported themselves if they walk through the gate. Uh, it's a privilege to walk out the gate to go outside an Army installation. Um, and our cultures are different. What's acceptable in the United States is not necessarily always acceptable in Japan on how we behave, how we talk, what we do. And we work, a lot, work hard with our, uh, especially our newly arrived soldiers and families and civilians to make sure they understand that. That they, if they act a certain way in the States, it might not be acceptable here. And to realize that in the worst case, a bad act, you, it can have a strategic impact on our relationship with the Japanese. There's been instances over the year, over the last couple years here in Japan, not that didn't involve Army folks, but we were affected by it, that uh, uh, went all the way to the President. President Obama and Prime Minister Abe had a discussion about it. Well, that's an individual's act uh, that was horrific, that went straight to the top, that caused a strategic impact, and it put our relationship 
a little bit, it has to be a little bit shaky there for a while. In time, it's been back to normal, but that's the impact that individuals can have uh, on the relationship just by their, how they act and what they do when they're off post. Japan is such a great country, and the people are so accommodating, and uh, I have no time for those that can't seem to figure out how to act when they go off post. I know the whole, all the other component commanders are the same, the USFJ commanders that way. I'll end this up like I started. I'm very proud of how the U.S. Army in Japan has been has uh, comported themselves when they've gone off post. And I, I, my anticipation, I anticipate it'll continue to be great because we're working hard. We have great leadership here that emphasizes that. Also.